And Richard, I think the best way to begin this uh, very interesting visit, which is going to take some hours this evening and into tomorrow morning, is to, uh, I think, tell one of the most famous stories of all involving a haunted area in, in the Chicago metro area. You mentioned it a few moments ago. It was something you started to investigate way back when, in 1973, a place called Bachelor's Grove Cemetery. This is a location which has gotten a lot of publicity on the radio. It's been written about. You go out there on your tours. It's become an area of consternation for some county officials because there are some ghost hunters who abuse the area and go when they shouldn't. There's been vandalism in that area, but nevertheless, this is one of those areas around Chicago with a great history. Tell me about it. Okay. Well, I don't go there actually in the current tour yet. I've sort of retired the spot for a little bit, but it's still out there, and it's still quite active, in fact. Bachelors Grove Cemetery takes its name from the fact that the area out there was settled by a band of bachelors from Bremen, the seaport in Germany, along the Baltic coast. And to this day, it's still Bremen Township out there because of the uh, first settlers. Now, as these bachelors settled in the area, they began to set up small farms, and they would then truck their vegetables into the city of Chicago and sell them to the uh, city dwellers. And eventually, they began to prosper, <clears throat> sent back to Germany for their girlfriends and sweethearts, brought them back here and raised families. But the name still stuck, Bachelor's Grove. And there are still tombstones at Bachelor's Grove Cemetery dating back as early as the, as the late 1830s. So we're going back a good century and a half into the history of this area. And it's a most remarkable uh, uh, area. It's pretty much unchanged from those early days. A lot of wooded area, a lot of forest preserve area out that way. But for one reason or another, the area acquired quite a reputation for being haunted. And although it is a little bit uh, controversial, I think there's quite a bit of uh, uh, quite a bit of reason to believe that the place is haunted. I first heard about it back in the mid 1960s. Began to visit the place regularly, to go out there to take photographs. Eventually met many people who had experiences out there and the experiences that people have had of a psychic nature really run a, a whole gamut from strange lights that are seen out there at night uh, to some more bizarre some really incredible apparitions that have been reported now when i first started to collect stories about the place i used to uh, my geography training came out and i used to say uh, sketch me a map and show me just where all this took place sketch a map of where the cemetery is, the pond, the creek, and where these experiences that you had took place. And I would collect these reports from people. And one thing popped out uh, very, very quickly out of the, uh, right off the page as I was collecting this material, it was that when people would sketch a map of the area, they would invariably have everything in its pretty much proper perspective. You'd have the creek, the pond, the cemetery, the dirt road, 143rd Street, and so on. But when they described a wooden farmhouse, as they did on many occasions, they would sometimes locate the farmhouse on the right-hand side of the road, sometimes on the left, sometimes east of the creek, sometimes west of the creek. Uh, the farmhouse seemed to move. Well, of course, farmhouses don't move. And I had been all over the area checking out uh, uh, the spot, looking all over through the woods, and I, I knew the whole area like the back of my hand, and I never saw the farmhouse. And I would question people further. They always described the same house, an old wooden-style farmhouse of the Civil War era, pre-Civil War era, uh, very uh, much faded and uh, somewhat dilapidated from the years. There would be uh, descriptions that would be extremely detailed. Three steps, two wooden columns, even a porch swing and a vine-covered trellis. <laughs> People would go into great detail describing this. They obviously saw something uh, that was quite solid, quite material, and yet when they told me where it was, there was nothing there, and there hadn't been anything there uh, for a long, long time. Well, I soon discovered that this must be one of the, perhaps one of the rarest kinds of psychic uh, apparition, a disappearing house. And the disappearing house of Bachelor's Grove is now passed on into the folklore of the area. But it's interesting to me that for generations, people have been seeing this house and nobody put two and two together to figure out uh, the big four, to figure out that it was a psychic occurrence. It was a non-physical house. So that's one of the things. But, Ed, I think I've mentioned the story before to you on the air. Uh, I actually have seen something very large and solid and substantial looking just suddenly disappear. And that was when I was visiting Bachelor's Grove with a friend of mine, Jim Brandon, who's the author of a paperback called Weird America. 
Oh, uh, yes. The state of Illinois in Weird America, uh, much of it is the Chicagoland area, and most of that is uh, some of my accounts and some of my material that I provided with Jim, who's an old friend of mine, and he's been a contributor to various 40 and unusual phenomena magazines for some time. Jim had talked to me many times about this, printed the material that I had gave him, used some of the material I gave him, but took it on my word, on my credibility. But when he did get a chance to visit the Chicago area a few years back, I thought, I'll take him out to Bachelors Grove and let him see firsthand what the place looks like. So we drove out there on a Saturday night. It was just uh, in the uh, middle of the evening, just around 8.30 to 9 o'clock or so when we got there. The uh, area was just right for a nice look around to see if anything unusual was about to happen but all that we did encounter that evening were swarms of mosquitoes which are out there uh, annually at uh, that time of the year and as we walked around looked around decided it was time to leave and go somewhere else in fact i i su suggested that we go out to visit resurrection cemetery we left the bachelor's grove area by proceeding west on 143rd street and as we proceeded west and crossed over the creek that flows through the area just a short distance away from the cemetery on the right hand side of the road which would be the north side of the road there was a medium-sized compact car just a dark compact car parked there and as we passed it i swerved a little bit to the left to pass it just in case somebody inside might decide to open a door at the wrong moment just to make sure there was enough distance and as i passed it just suddenly without any uh, uh any other uh, it just it just disappeared it was just oh, incredible yeah. it, it taking back on it now it's it's amazing because uh i was shocked by that obviously hit the brake stopped in the middle of 143rd street faced jim brandon said did you see that but he had been facing me talking all that time didn't see a thing and found it very very hard to swallow what i was just telling him uh that i had just seen and Jim Brandon, author of Weird America, found my story a little bit hard to swallow and also uh, <laughs> uh, was very, very upset that he could have been party to being one of the witnesses to a disappearing car on 143rd Street, which is incidentally only one of a number of such reports that have come down to me. Uh, there are, there's possibly somebody out there tonight along 143rd Street who uh, should pay a little bit more attention to what's outside the windshield because that car that... Uh, he may just have forgotten about quickly. He may have just suddenly entered another world and left this plane for mm -hmm. another part of the Twilight Zone. So look out tonight on Walpurgis Night for disappearing mm -hmm. cars. That's yes, correct. Twelve minutes before midnight. This is WIND Radio. Now you know a little bit of the history of the area called Bachelor's Grove. Not an interesting place to be tonight unless you have a very strong constitution.